Buenos Nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna show you how to build a Jafar chip and how to preload the X-Blast OS. Without further ado, let's start building the Jafar chip. At this point, we'll be using some liquid solder, some SN63 PB37, and we'll just be covering up these pads. The next thing to do is to place the lattice IC. You can tell the orientation by the circle up in the right-hand side, and of course, the star. And now we'll be placing our resistor, our LED diode, and you'll note the orientation is by the green bar. It's on the left-hand side. And then of course the transistor. And now we're ready to place the Jafar on our preheater. I have it set for 195C. You could probably get her away with 187. And this process will take a couple of minutes for it to preheat and for the liquid solder to start melting. Looks like everything flowed correctly. Now it's time to go ahead and touch up all these joints. When you're all done, you should have something like this. You can of course clean up the flux now or after you're all done. For now, I'm gonna leave the flux on here and I already have it pre-wired so I can plug it into the Jafar board. So let's go ahead and show you how I have that configured. So of course you see the TDO, TDI, TMS, TCK, ground, and VCC right there. I have a pre-built connector that looks like this. And of course it's set up to plug into the Jafar chip just like this. No soldering is required. I find you just need to hold this a little bit of pressure while you're programming it, and that'll take care of everything. As for the wiring setup on the Flashcat end, it's going to look a bit like this. We'll probably have the schematic or the pin layout somewhere over here. And of course, it'll also be in the description down below. Now we'll begin to program the lattice chip. Open up Flashcat, connect the lattice chip, go to script, load script, SVF player, and go to SVF player tab, run SVF file. And you'll of course use the SVF that you downloaded and load that up onto the Jafar chip. All right, so at this point, the next thing to do is, of course, to flash the BIOS chip, and that'll be this guy right here. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can use a programmer like I have right here, which is the XGeeku Pro, if that's pronounced correctly. You'll let me know in the comments down below. And, of course, the second method would be if you already have a pre-built Jafar or an Aladdin and it's using the same flash type. You can plug that into your Xbox and do a swap and program the blank chip. And those would be the two methods that I know of that you can do this. I, of course, am going to program using the programmer because that's the easiest method for me at this time. And this chip, of course, only goes in one way. So first thing you'll want to do is select the IC, which is this one right here, SST49LF080A. We'll load up our file to program, which is, of course, one I already have constructed. In your case, you may be using the XBlast OS bin file. And we'll program this. Looks like our programming is complete. Once you finish programming the IC, we can install it to the Jafar board and install the female LPC header. And of course, we need to take great care with how much solder is placed in this area. And the orientation, of course, is with the circle down. And just try to get this thing aligned as best as possible. We'll go ahead and double check those joints and then install the female LPC headers. And now to install the female LPC header, and that goes on like this. And you just solder the back side, add a little bit of flux. All 
All right, at this point, you'll probably want to clean off all that flux, and then we can try it out in the console. And the console that's going to get the privilege of having the Jafar chip installed into it, why this Skeletor Xbox right here. Nah! So let's go ahead and open it up and install that chip. We're going to ruin this warranty label. Ooh. How about this one over here? Mm. Gonna need a gazpacho to open this up. Well, at least we know the adhesive is still good. What do you suppose it looks like inside? thing is uh, it's very difficult to open. All right, and there we are. It's not the worst. It's actually not too shabby. What do you want to bet that the clock capacitor has exploded? But if it's exploded, has it actually started corroding things? Yeah, well, we, we may actually browse through the area, I guess. Let's go ahead and remove the screws out of the drives. And there you have it, folks. Quite a bit of corrosion on this thing. Look at all that. Definitely looking pretty nasty. Never actually seen one with the corrosion on the screw. And of course, this is a 1.0 console. Amazingly enough, the other capacitors don't look like they've exploded, but I guarantee you they're faulty. Let's go ahead and speed right through the unscrewing of this motherboard from the chassis. Of course, we'll remove the cables first. And I guess just a sanity check, we'll go ahead and make sure the console actually powers on before we progress any further. So reconnect a couple of cables here. Well, it powers on. GPU fan is a little loud. The logo is discolored though. It's black and white. I'm assuming that's because of failed capacitors. All right, let's go ahead and install that Jafar chip. And one final screw right here. No, we have one more. Silly me. Clearly I've not had enough coffee today. I'm gonna take care of the DO point and the LPC header off camera, and then we'll plug in that Jafar chip. All right, so we finished our DO point and of course the LPC header, which took a while because it was populated as you saw, at least I believe you saw. That said, uh, it's right here, it's installed. Let's go ahead and hook up the power and of course the AV to HDMI. Don't need the ethernet cable, don't know why I held that. All right, we have the power plugged in now. Go ahead and hit the power button. Let me change the point of view for you, kinda. We have Evo X flashed in the first bank. And of course it's already set for the 512 MB mod. Nani? In the second bank we have regular old Evo X. We'll go ahead and boot that up just to make sure that this thing is working properly. And it looks like it is, because we have the logo up there. Of course, we have no drive hooked up, so it's not really gonna go anywhere. Someone that's a little bit more experienced with these chips could probably chime in down below. I set the DO point on the bottom of the board instead of hooking it up to the Jafar chip, though I know it's not really important to boot into the original BIOS anymore, I would like the chip to be able to do it. So you can let me know if that's the reason why. This all said, I hope you enjoyed the guide in building your own Jafar chip. While we didn't show you the hot swap method of flashing the BIOS, we did show you the more difficult method, which is programming everything from scratch on your own. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.